Smart TVs are getting more and more complex. Now with the integration of your streaming services like Netflix and Disney+, Plus, and with the addition of your home devices like Ring or Echo Bee, it's important to choose the right one that suits your ecosystem. You've got a bunch of choices to choose from. So which is the right one for you? Let's get into it. So today we're looking at three different streaming boxes. We've got the Amazon Fire Stick 4K, the Google Chromecast with Google TV, which is right behind me right here, and then of course the Apple TV 4K. They're all powered by their own native assistant, whether it's Google Assistant, Alexa, or Siri. Now there's obviously a bunch of different features and integrations that you have to consider when choosing the right box for you. And the first one that really comes to mind is the remote. I mean, this is gonna be how you are controlling the entire system. And we've got three very different ones with all of these boxes. First, we have the Amazon Fire Stick. This one feels like a fairly regular remote. It's very, very light. You've got a microphone on the top, a power button, a microphone so you can access Alexa. You've got a circular sort of dial looking thing here, but it's not actually a dial. It really is just your directional up, down, left, right buttons with select in the center. We've got home, back, menu. We do have rewind, play, and fast forward buttons, volume rockers, and then a mute button. There's nothing on the sides in this case, and this one actually takes two AAA batteries that are included in the box. Next, we've got the Google Chromecast remote, and this is a new addition to Chromecast. Since previously, the earlier editions, you just used your phone to connect. Now we've got an actual native system going on in the background here, and this remote is what powers that system. So we've got a very round design here. Again, we have what looks to be a dial on the top, but it is, again, just those directional buttons with select in the center. We've got a back button. We've got the Google Assistant button, so you can always speak to it to do things like searching for apps and movies. We've got the home button, mute, YouTube, Netflix. We've got a dedicated power button and an input button. And then on the side, you can see we've got the volume rockers here. Now, aside from the fact that it's pretty slippery, this is actually a very good remote. And this one's gonna learn the devices that you use. So the power button can control your TV, but you can also set a separate device for the volume rockers. So say you're, you wanna power off your TV, but you wanna be able to control the volume of a soundbar separately. You do have the option to learn both of those things with this remote, which is a really nice touch and something I'm glad that they thought of. One thing that I noticed with the Amazon remote is that you can only pair it to one device for IR, meaning if you wanna turn off your TV and adjust the volume, you can do that, it will learn it. But if you have two separate devices, you wanna be able to turn on and off your TV, but you want the volume to control your soundbar, this doesn't have those capabilities. So if you're using both of those devices, chances are you're gonna to have to use a separate remote. And it's not necessarily a deal breaker, but for some people it might be. So then we've got the Apple remote, and this is a highly controversial one. As you can see, it's very minimal, it's very thin. We've got a speaker built into the top, a menu and home button, the microphone to access Siri, play pause, and then your volume rockers. And then on the top here, that's actually a trackpad that you use to control the whole UI. I found it a little bit slippery in the beginning, a little bit difficult to use. However, over time I got used to it and it's become one of my favorites. And this one doesn't run on batteries. This one you plug in with a lightning cable and it will charge and it's good for quite a long time. Now the actual navigation of all of these boxes is probably the most complex part of this comparison video, but also one of the most important as well. So starting with Google Chromecast, they begin with a content first strategy, highlighting suggested movies and TV shows to watch. It's gonna pull in content suggestions based on your viewing habits. And a really welcome feature that's pretty much exclusive to Google is that it does a really good job of letting you know what is part of a service that you already have versus something that you may have to pay for or is gonna take a little bit of extra work to actually sign up and use. And they do that with a lock. So if you have a Netflix subscription and it's suggesting Netflix content, it'll just show it. But if it's suggesting something from the Google Play Store that's gonna cost you three or $4.99, then you're gonna see a lock beside it so that you know that that content requires an additional purchase. Now, the one downside I found to this layout is that there's really no continue watching sections. So if you're using multiple apps to watch your content and you're not sure which one you were watching a TV show on, then it's definitely gonna be hard to find. You're gonna have to browse through each of those apps to find it. Now, if you are used to opening your individual apps like Netflix or Amazon on a regular basis, then this isn't really gonna be a deal breaker for you whatsoever. In fact, you may not even use the home screen that's pictured behind me. Now, in terms of app availability on the Google Chromecast, 
you've got pretty much everything that you can think of. It's a really extensive list and you've got the power of the Google Play Store backing this device. So you're not really gonna find another TV, maybe aside from Apple, that's going to have an extensive list of apps just like this. Whether it's a streaming service that you're subscribing to or a game that you wanna to add to your TV, the Chromecast is pretty much gonna have it all. So on the Amazon Fire Stick, we see a very similar content first approach. Now their home screen obviously shows a significant amount of Amazon Prime content. And while it doesn't have a continue watching section that aggregates all of your different apps, it does have a recent section that shows you the TV shows you were watching on Amazon Prime and the apps you were recently opening. So it's gonna give you a better understanding of which apps you were recently using, which is gonna help you figure out which one you were using to watch your last TV show. The navigation was actually pretty smooth to use with the Amazon Fire Stick, with the exception of the menus, which I found a little bit odd to try to navigate. It wasn't the most intuitive device to use all the time. Now, in terms of apps, we do have a large variety of them available, though the way to browse them is a little bit awkward on the home screen. You don't really have a full app store to view, so you're kind of stuck browsing through the featured ones that they highlight to you, browsing by category, or really just searching for the app you want in hopes that they have it. Still, you do get a lot of options in terms of the apps that are available, anything from your streaming services to games to even web browsers, if web browsing is something that you do on your TV. So the Apple TV design is a little bit different than the other two, where the home screen really just shows you all of the available apps that you've downloaded. On the top shelf of apps, you've got a featured content section, which is gonna show you your recently played movie or TV shows, or it's gonna show you featured content from within that app. You can configure the home button so that it actually opens to the Apple TV app, in which case it functions very similarly to what you expect from Chromecast or Amazon Fire Stick. Open Apple TV. The Apple TV app is gonna pull in content from all of your streaming services and cable subscriptions if you have one. And in regard to apps, you've got a huge dedicated app store full of apps that are optimized for Apple TV. And with Apple Arcade, you've got some really high quality gaming content that you can use on this thing. The biggest problem I have with Apple TV is that there's really no indicator on whether it's content that you have available or content that you have to pay for. Their app really blends things from services like Netflix or Apple TV Plus but it also brings in the entire catalog of iTunes TV and iTunes movies. So you could click on something and then find out it's actually gonna cost you. So for that reason, I actually often go to the individual apps like Netflix or Amazon Prime to find my content versus browsing the Apple TV app as I find it a little bit less useful. So which of these systems is the best choice for you? Well, first off, it really depends on the services that you're using. If you're big on the Apple TV Plus subscription, and you have HomeKit accessories, then Apple TV is gonna be a really good choice for you. I wasn't really impressed with my Amazon Fire Stick experience, except for the rewind, play and fast forward buttons that are on the remote. That was a really nice touch to have, but the others really don't include. Still, I can't really advise buying that one just based on that feature alone. But if you're really looking for the best streaming box in terms of quality, but also in terms of cost to get everything that you need without totally breaking the bank, then Chromecast with Google TV is the absolute best choice for you. So out of all three of these, which one is your favorite and why? Let me know that down in the comments below. As always, remember to hit that subscribe button to see more from me and hit that like button because it tells YouTube that this video doesn't suck. Thanks for watching you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.